What's up guys, Jord here, and today I'm starting a new series I like to call Kid Altood. And the first video, we're gonna talk about how to land that entry level software engineering job. But first, some good news. I have recently started a new position at, with my boy, Grogu, Baby Yoda. I just accepted a job with the Walt Disney Company, and honestly, it has been crazy, it's been wild. But the reason why I started this channel was not only to, you know, document my time after graduation, but hopefully, you know, I can help some people coming after me. So let's jump right in. Landing that entry level software engineering job. Five things you're gonna wanna do. Number one, and this might seem obvious, but there are a couple things that people overlook. Review your resume. Specifically, two things you wanna do. Make sure your resume is result driven, not task driven, and also, Make sure that you're including your personal projects, whether you're coming from a computer science background, code camp, self-taught, the only proof of your work, the experience that you have are in those personal projects. You wanna include them in there. And result-driven resume, super important. You want to tell people what you have accomplished, not what you're doing. You don't wanna say, and this is, some, this is a trap that I fell into that I see people fall into all the time. People say, I developed, I developed a web-based application in Python, Django, Flask, whatever, and I do this and this and this. Um, I'm a SQL developer. No, you wanna say, I developed an application that enabled this group of people to cut their time in half in doing this. You want numbers, numbers, numbers in there. So one, review your resume. Two, list the companies that you're interested in. When you're preparing, you know, to start applying for these jobs, you want to make sure that you're going into these interviews with interest because these recruiters will know, these software engineers that will interview you will know. And so what you want to do is list the companies that you're also you're actually interested in, you know what they do, and you know, do a little digging, make sure your skills line up. That way, when you go into your interview, not only will you have skills they're looking for, but they'll see, hey, this person actually knows the company. They didn't just uh, you were hiring, so I decided to apply. No, do your research. And so listing the companies that you're actually interested in working for helps a lot. Three, apply. Duh. You're probably like, these are some stupid points, but wait. The reason why I say apply is because there are some things that people don't do, and that is reaching out to recruiters directly. I'm not talking like messaging uh, LinkedIn recruiters who work for specific companies. Hey, do you all have jobs? Don't, that's too generic. They get mess, probably get hundreds of messages. And if you just say that, they're gonna ignore you. But when you find jobs that you want at companies you're interested in, normally what I'll do, I'll find a job, I'll apply, and then I'll find a technical recruiter. That's important, technical recruiter on LinkedIn based in that area. And I'll reach out to them and say, hey, my name's Jordan Morris, I'm a software engineer, and I recently applied for this job. And I'll link that link what recruiters will do they'll see that you actually have a specific job it'll catch their eye they might be familiar with that job already and then they'll actually look at your skills that way you can avoid the black hole sometimes you may not be able to do this sometimes you might have to apply to that black hole but if your resume is solid you have your projects just apply 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 when i was applying for my first job at ford my first full-time job I was sending out no less than three applications a day, sometimes six and seven to all the companies that I have listed out. And there are a lot of companies out there. You may have this one ideal job in mind, but sometimes you might need a job that could be a stepping stone to that job. So keep your options open, but make sure you're actually interested in the company and apply. Number four, while you're applying, expand on those projects. I know I already covered projects in the resume portion, but while you're applying, while you have free time, either you know your senior year of college, you're winding down your code camp, you're self-taught, expand on those projects. Not only will it improve your skills, but it'll also make the projects more interesting, more in-depth. So if you have a web application that's an aggregator or you have a tic-tac-toe game, then add multiplayer, add you know uh, a leaderboard, a scoring system, whatever. So take the time to expand on those projects that you are doing. That way your GitHub account will have regular history, your projects will look better, and you have some more to talk about in these interviews. And finally, prepare for the interview. When you do start getting callbacks, and you will, 
it, it may be hundreds of applications. Like when I was applying to Ford, I had sent out literally, when I tell you for four months, I was sending out no less than three applications a day. It was insane. But you will get those callbacks. Prepare for your interview. Three things you're gonna wanna do, and I can go deeper in depth on any of these topics, you know, just let me know in the comments, guys, and I got y'all. But three things you wanna do to prepare for your software engineering interview. One, coding problems, coding problems, coding problems. Leak code, hacker rank. Do those easy, medium, hard problems. Start with easy and then try and do mostly medium and hard so you can get ready for those coding assessments as these companies have, the initial one and the whiteboard interview. Not only will doing these without help help you in your problem solving, but also it'll help you develop better coding skills. Not to mention practice talking out your problem because the most important thing in these interviews is they want to hear your thought process. So talk about what you're doing, even when it's just you. Two, architecture. Whether you're a back-end developer, front-end developer, familiarize yourself with popular industry architecture standards because a lot of the time they want to hear about how you might scale a system or distributed systems. Basically, how you can apply your developing skills to enterprise level architecture applications. And three, your soft skills. You gotta know how to talk to people. Even if you're an introvert, you don't like to talk to people, you just wanna code, you're a freaking genius. People wanna know how it will be like to work with you, basically. So try and go in there with some energy, be friendly. Know what you're talking about. Talk about how um, that you will come a time. They may ask you questions like, what if, what's the time you are working with someone difficult? Sometimes you may have to think of things. Sometimes you might have to expound on things, but practice those soft skills. A lot of things you can find online. But to recap, number one, review your resume, include your projects, make sure it's results driven. Number two, list companies that interest you so you can just go and start hitting those companies. Number three, apply, 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 apply a lot. Reach out to those recruiters directly. Even if you have to say, hey, my name is blah, in like the little uh, note that you do and you have to add the recruiter, I've done this. It got me a lot of interviews. Do that. Number four, expand on your projects. In the meantime, keep on developing. Keep your coding skills fresh. You wanna be on it. Don't burn yourself out with preparing for those interview questions with hack rate and leak code. But while I'm on it, prepare for the interview. And that can be through projects, coding problems, look at architecture, no, get familiarize yourself with that architecture, and work on your soft skills. Anyways, y'all, thanks for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know down below, or you wanna hear about anything else more in depth, just let me know. Hope this helps. First episode in kid adulthood, because honestly, I feel like a kid adult. That's that's probably why I picked Childish Giordino. But hope this helps you land that entry-level software engineering position. And if you want to see more, just hit the subscribe button below. Peace.